How are we doing? Good, but that's my question. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Happy to be here. Grateful for the opportunity and uh, yeah, ready to get this done. And we haven't seen you since August. Is that a, an appropriate amount of time for you, or did you want to fight a little bit sooner than that? Yeah, I wanted to fight a, again in November, December. I just never got the call, didn't get an opponent. So uh, now it's the next best date. They called me. I took the fight uh, the same day, so no problem there. What do you do with, during that time when you're just waiting for a fight? How do you stay motivated? Man, uh, I train full time. I train every day, regardless of if I have a fight or not. That as well as uh, my daughter's being born here in a couple weeks. So that was a big motivation, this camp, and, you know, really just kept me, kept me focused and grounded. When you have a child on the way, how difficult is that to train? Because I'm, I imagine there's a lot to get ready for a new baby. It was, it was actually really easy. It was nothing changed. Um, my, my lady back home, Alexa, she is an amazing mom. She's going to be an amazing mom. And uh, she did everything for me this camp. She really dialed in and sacrificed her time and, and all the love that she wants for me to prepare for this fight and be ready. You mentioned that you took the name with, you know, right away. What, what did you think when you got the, the name and the date and all that? What were your thoughts? I thought it was a tough fight. You know, uh, I've seen Christian fight plenty of times before on previous cards. And, you know, I was impressed with him. He's a, he's a tough kid, but I just think I'm better all around, and I've it's my time. And he's coming up in weight. So is it difficult to um, be fighting somebody that you haven't seen? I guess how difficult is it when you're looking at his tape to know what he'll be like at this weight? Will it, Do you think it will affect him enough that it, it could affect the way that you look at his tape? Yeah, I mean, the difference is, is I'm a grown man, and he's been fighting little kids, basically, you know, at 135. If I get a hold of a 35-pounder, it's, it's a wrap. So um, he's going to have to put on a lot of size in a few months, and I, don't, I just don't see that happening. So I think I'm going to have a power advantage, strength advantage, and uh, I think we'll get to see that. I know he is coming up in weight, but he, he does have a history of, of missing weight. Is there any worry that he could still miss weight? Because we have seen that before where someone will come up in weight and still miss. I hope he does. I, I need the money bad, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I hope he does. Uh, it would, wouldn't be a problem for me. I'll still take the fight regardless. What sort of fight are you expecting from him? Uh, I'm expecting him to try to take me into deep waters, you know. That's what he's done with most of his other fights. There's been a lot of questions saying that I can't go into deep waters, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I think we'll get to see uh, something special on Saturday. Do you anticipate it going the full three rounds? No, not at all. I think I could finish him in one. I think it's going to be tough. I don't take him lightly at all, uh, at all. But I think my skills are there. I train with some of the best guys in the world, uh, Chris Gutierrez, Jonathan Martinez, Yusuf Salal, and one of the best gyms in the world. So I've seen it all, done it all, and, you know, it's just time to make it happen on the big stage. Have you guys interacted at all in the lead-up to the fight? Nope. He said something. He said it's personal, but uh, you don't want personal beef with crazy people. I'm from Kansas. We're pretty wild. So he says it's personal? Yeah, I don't know why, but that's what he said. I don't know. Okay, well, I'm going to ask him that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, buddy, for taking the time. I have to ask, because you mentioned um, Chris and Jonathan, how awesome is it to have not just that type of talent to, to make you harder, to make things difficult if need be, but also emulate uh, your opponent to be like, all right, man, this is the looks he might give you. We're going to figure this thing all the way out. Oh, we have uh, some guys with some of the best eyes in, in the UFC. You know, these guys can see all tendencies. They see everything. And they're good at replicating. Um, we didn't really have to do too much because it's, it's really me. If I perform the A-plus fighter that I can be, it's no problem. If I go out there and don't show up, that's where the problem creeps in. So um, really just having those guys around and getting the looks because obviously I don't have a lot of fights. I'm 6-0 and as a pro. So having those guys that are vets and, and have been doing this for a long time and I get to train with them every day, it's, it's amazing. I've seen, like I said, I've seen it all. Well, you know what, shout out to that 6-0 because even if, you, if it's just 6-0, and that's still respectable and also in the UFC. So you know that just doesn't get any bigger than that. Um, with, with the training and, and the motivation and drive, not that you lack it, but that, that fatherhood coming up now, how are you able to blend the two together? How does that refocus now? I think it'll be easy, man. I want to I wanna raise a gym rat. My daughter's going to be raised in a gym, and she's going to be feral like me. So I have no, I have no doubts about that, man. Uh, you know, I, I live in an RV right now, and we're going we're gonna to stay in the RV regardless of what happens this fight. Um, I want her to grow up on a farm and, and work with animals and, and do real things, work with her hands, not be one of these uh, – 
Instagram models or blah blah blah. You know what I mean? I can dig it. And if baby girl has that that farmer strength, man, she's destined to be a fighter. I mean, we just had Joanna, you know, like in the Hall of Fame. One day you could be like, man, I'm gonna coach you. I'm gonna reverse roles. Yeah. That how exciting. Uh, the the farm thing, like this is um how you were raised, how you you brought up. Does that help you stay grounded and not get caught up with the social media stuff like you mentioned and the digital stuff and all that? Yeah, I grew up a small town, man. I grew up riding dirt bikes and creeks and swimming in dirty water and stuff. So uh, it, I like going back home. I don't like being in the city. And, you know, uh, I think I think that's where I belong and that's where I'll end up end up when I'm done fighting. Right now I'm in Denver at Factory X. It's all right. I, I get out in the mountains every weekend, so I'm always outside and doing something. Awesome, man. And you touched about it a little bit earlier with Amy and him. Um, with that advantage that you have, just a natural guy at your weight, having – you're about to tangle with someone moving up. In Colorado, there's no way you don't have, like, the most intense cardio because of the elevation. Is that also a factor just going into Vegas that you're going to be good if it was a 25-minute fight? Yeah, man. I train for a 25-minute fight right now. Um the big thing is, is I'm always ready. And like I said, people doubt my cardio because I've only been in the first round. You know, I'm excited to talk to my coaches in the middle of the fight. I'm excited for that. You know, um, I can go in the deep waters. I've been wrestling since I was eight years old. I've been competing in one-on-one -on -one combat sports since I was eight years old. So it's nothing new to me. And, you know, I run up in the mountains at 10,000 feet every weekend. So, you know, it, it's, it's funny when people say that and we're going to get to see a show. Man, I can't wait. Well, if you are right about Saturday getting that first round finish, looks like you might be upgrading that RV. Yes, sir. I mean, That's what we're looking for. All right. Good luck on Saturday. I know you talk about uh, talking to your coaches. You know, part of the apex is that you can hear your coaches as your fight's going on. You've had a fight here before. You know, a lot of fighters always want to rush. They want to get to the big arenas. But do you enjoy these apex shows while they're still happening in your career? Yeah, man, I don't mind them. The biggest thing, my biggest – dislike with them is just the exposure you get you don't get as much exposure at the apex but other than that you know it's another friday for me we spar every friday in the cage and you know it's so nothing new man i I've, I've been prepared for this i've been bred for this and it's my time you know and coming in with that six to no you know with the undefeated with that oh you know a lot of guys are gonna be putting that target on your back is that the kind of thing that you embrace and that you're hoping for and is that the kind of thing that uh not that it's pressure, but is that do you enjoy that anticipation that fighters are going to come in there trying to take that away from you? Yeah, I feel like I've always had a target on my back ever since I was a little kid. And I fully believe that pressure is something that you put on yourself. It's not a real thing. You know, it's, it's really just about performing to your best ability. And when you do that and you've been prepared and you put in the work, uh, the stars align for you. And that's what I base my whole career off of before fighting and as I'm a professional athlete in the UFC. I don't want to take any guesses, but you said you've been dealing with this since you're a little kid. Is it, is that a just? Did people try to bully you? Were, were you a short kid? I mean, what do you mean when you? I mean, I've always been short, but I, like I said, I've always competed at the highest level. Gotcha. You know, I've my grandpa sacrificed his job and put all his money and all his time into me taking me across the United States to train with the best guys, wrestle the best guys, compete with the best guys. So, like I said, um, I've been doing this since I was eight, and. I fully believe that he put me in this position, and I owe everything to him. Is, is your grandfather still around? Yeah, he's still around, and uh, this is actually going to be the first time he gets to – we got him tickets, so this is going to be the first time uh, he gets to watch me fight live in the UFC. So I'm super excited for that, uh, and just blessed the UFC uh, gave me those tickets. I was going to say, it's got to be a special moment for you and for him. You know, is he going to, is he the kind of, does he give you feedback on your fights, or does he just enjoy that you're enjoying yourself? Is he, or is he the kind of break down tape with you? No, he just enjoys it. You know, um, he's, a, he's a Vietnam vet. He's getting old now. And, you know, I just wanted to fight in front of him in the UFC before he, before he expires. So um, that's just such a blessing to me and something that, you know, if it didn't happen and he passed away before he got to watch me fight, I really didn't think I would continue fighting, you know. So I'm just super happy that he's going to be here, you know, uh, performing in front of him and the rest of my family. That's why, I, that's why I fight. I don't fight for myself. I don't fight to be cool on social media, blah. I fight for my family and to, and to provide for them and to make them proud. And I feel like I've made him proud, but I want to make him even more. That's incredible. I'm so happy that you get to get to have that happen for him out there as well. Last for me, I know you said, uh, you know, the, the kid's already going to be a gym rat. Uh, I assume mom's already on board with that, and his mom may be a gym rat as well. Yeah, she's a fighter as well. You know, she had to take some time off since she's pregnant, but uh, 
she will be back in the gym. I'll be in the gym. Baby, baby girl will be in the gym. And, uh, you know, Alexa might be in the UFC here in a couple of years. So I keep an eye out on that as well. That's awesome. And if you get that bonus, you're going to put, you're going to take that and get some land. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some land. Uh, the biggest thing is in Denver, it's so expensive, man. Yeah. Uh, it's so expensive. Back home, I can get a lot of land for the money. But, yeah, I want to put the RV on, a land, on some land for a few years, keep fighting, keep uh, hoarding my win bonuses and blah, 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 and, you know, eventually build a tiny house and have a lot of acres and do whatever I want, ride dirt bikes, hunt, set up bear traps, so, <laughs> <laughs> pipe bombs, everything out there, you know? <laughs> Maybe let, I'm gonna let train little... some. I'm gonna train some coyotes to bite anything with a badge and a, and a fade. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, shoot. Uh, I almost lost my train of thought thinking about the pipe bombs. I love it. Um, does that mean are you gonna? Would you possibly consider relocating, or is is Colorado and Denver your your thing? No, I think I'm gonna stay there uh, until my fight career is done, and then you know I'll really start looking to I don't know where I'm gonna go yet but I want to be somewhere where no one can find me I don't gotta talk to people and mess with people I want to be out by myself yeah. with my family and you know uh do all the cool stuff yeah I'm, th I'm thinking you need to look at Texas maybe some Nevada area where you can get out and go go crazy I can't do <laughs> Colorado Texas. might be a little too conservative yeah, they are they, trust me uh I, maybe Montana or something you know uh some, something where I can hunt and do some cool stuff Texas is I'll get in trouble down there <laughs> Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. I just thought of one more. Um, you mentioned you, know, you got undefeated. Your opponent has taken the O of his last two opponents. What do you ha do? You think if there's any kind of superstition with that? Do you think about that when you're accepting a fight or thinking about a fight? No, like I said, you know, uh, he beat Raul. I feel like Raul kind of got the silver spoon in the division, and you know, he's 18 years old. He beat an 18-year-old, great, you know. Um, and then he beat Saman, another young guy. Not saying these guys can't be great because they have tons of potential and tons of time, but they're young. Like, when I was 18, I wasn't ready for this, you know. And so he beat these, these young guys, so that has nothing to do with me. I'm a grown man. I've been training for this. And, you know, I have a different style than those guys as well. So I think that's where the, the difference is right there is the style. Thank you.